With hybrid work situations and more meetings than ever before, our calendars can be quite overwhelming, which is why I'm so excited to show you today's video. And we are going to learn four features in the new Outlook to help you take control of your calendar and ultimately boost your productivity. Hi, my name's Amy. Welcome to my channel. Let's nerd out. The first item that we are going to take a look at is how you can make your calendar more transparent to your coworkers by defining your hours as well as your location, making it easier to plan meetings. Let's head on up to the view tab and then select view settings. From here, we will select calendar and then go to the work hours and location. From here, you can easily define the days of the week that you work. So let's go ahead and select Thursday. And then on Mondays, why don't we do 8 a.m. till 12 remote? And then in the afternoon, we will do 2 till 5 p.m. And from this drop down menu here, depending on your work setup, you'll see remote and then as well as your office locations. Let's go ahead and toggle Wednesday off and save our work hours and location. All right, let's see this in action now. Let's head on over to the calendar because I want to show you some little tips for how this looks on your end as well as on your coworkers. And here we are in my calendar and we'll notice here on those days that we defined an hour and location, there is an icon. And if we select that, then we can easily toggle between the different locations. So say on Tuesday, June 4th, I'm actually going to be working in the office this day, then I can easily update that here. And now that little icon is updated so that you can easily reference where you have defined your locations for that day. And going to that Monday where we defined that split day, we can see both of those timeframes here as well as options. So say in the afternoon, we're gonna be working in the office and we can easily toggle that on. And once again, that little icon has updated so that you can easily see that you have defined a hybrid location for that day. Now, if you are consistently working in the office or consistently working from home, then having these little icons is not gonna be that helpful and it might just clutter your calendar. So what we can do is select this icon. We can go down to set a schedule and this will take us back to that main area where we defined our settings. And this one right here, show work location on my calendar. If we toggle that off, then we can save that and now we will notice that those little icons have disappeared. Now you might be wondering what your coworkers can see when you define those settings. So here we are in Mike's calendar and let's say that Mike wants to schedule a meeting with Amy on Friday, May 31st. We can go ahead and expand this card here and we will give this meeting a title. If you're enjoying this video, then please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my video get traction. So from here, we can now go ahead and add attendees. Let's go ahead and select myself. And now we can see that there are some suggested times here that are populating as well as a status icon to show it, who is available for these suggested times. One thing that I really like here is this preferences. So for example, we have defaulted to the earliest, but you can even say, for example, like I wanna meet this week or if I wanna meet next week. So let's go ahead and select something for next week. And we can see that there are these times available starting Monday morning. However, what about this in-person event? This one is super helpful if you want to meet in person. And now we are going to notice that those suggested times have updated to the afternoon because Amy is only going to be available in the office in the afternoon on Monday. So those are some great little tips for this scheduling in the events area here. Another great feature is the scheduling assistant. So if we toggle to this tab here, then we can now define required attendees as well as optional attendees or even a location. And this will provide you with a nice visual view of everyone's availability for those calendar days. You'll see the legend down here. Science has proven that taking breaks between meetings can help reduce stress. And in the second feature, I'm going to show you how you can automatically schedule breaks between your meetings. This will allow you to regain your thought, hydrate, or even stretch your legs. Now pay attention though, because this one is a little bit sneaky. 
To see this in action, let's first open up our calendar and select a date. And then here we will try and schedule a meeting. When we select the time from the drop down menu, we will see, for example, 9 a.m., 9.30, 10, 10.30. So we're seeing these nice, consistent 30 minute intervals. Now let's see how we can adjust our settings to schedule breaks between our meetings. So if we head on back into the mail view, once again, go to view and then view settings. We will go to the calendar and then events and invitations. From here, under the events you create, so just keep that in mind, we will see this little checkbox here to shorten duration for all events. So right now, everything is zero for me, but for example, why don't we say start events late? So for events that are less than one hour, we can start them at five minutes later, eight minutes later, or 10. Let's go ahead and select eight. And then for meetings that are one hour or longer, we can have intervals of five, 10, or 15. Why don't we go ahead for 15 minutes and click save. Now let's see this in action. So if we head on back to the calendar, then here we can go ahead and create a meeting event. So from this drop down menu for the times, we're now seeing 9 a.m., 9.08, 9.30, and 9.38. So we're seeing that eight minute interval for those meetings that are gonna be less than an hour long. Now, if we go ahead and change this, so we'll see that it even puts in these handy placeholders. So it says about an hour, about an hour and a half. That just helps you calculate the time duration with those funky intervals. But we can now see that we've extended that meeting and now these intervals have changed. So now it's 9.15, 9.30, 9.45, and 10. So we're seeing that 15 minute delay in meeting length. So now when you schedule meetings, you'll have an additional time between your meetings to refresh. Just keep in mind that this feature is only available when you schedule meetings. The third feature that we are going to take a look at can be helpful if you are invited to a meeting, but you are unable to attend the meeting. We are now able to keep declined meetings visible in our Outlook calendar, allowing you to easily access that meeting information with ease. So once again, we will head on up to the View tab, go to View Settings, and then you guessed it, from the calendar, we will once again go to Events and Invitations, and from the bottom here, there's going to be this save to client event. So mine is already toggled on and I'm going to leave that on to show you this. So let's see this in action. Mike here has sent me a meeting, but unfortunately I've got another meeting at this time. So I am going to respond and decline that meeting. From my calendar, we can now see that this declined meeting is still visible from my calendar. And this can be super helpful because if we expand this, this meeting was created in Teams, so it's got a loop agenda. And yes, I'm gonna be cheeky and ask you again. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. But this allows you now to easily access all of that meeting information, even if you weren't able to attend. It can also be helpful, for example, if this meeting gets canceled, and then now you can see that your calendar has freed up, so you can go ahead and update that RSVP to attend that meeting. The last feature that we are going to take a look at today is how you can modify recurring calendar events without modifying the series history. So in the new Outlook, to schedule a recurring event, we can expand this details. We'll just give this a name and do you know what? You're awesome today. And then from here, we can go ahead and select the repeat option from this drop down menu. And let's change this to weekly. So we'll do starting June 11th on Tuesdays and we will just go ahead and save. So we can now see this recurring event has now been created. And if we want to, for example, edit any of these, then we can go ahead and select the meeting. And then from the drop down, we now have the ability to edit this event, this and all following events or all events in this series. And we can even delete this event and have those options there. So this is not new. This has always been available in Outlook, but it is now available in the new Outlook. Thank you so much for nerding out with me today. We will see you in the next video.